I'd like to welcome back all our keen HSC students from across Australia to another episode of Mingling with Masters. Today we'll have two guests, Margaret Atwood, author of Hagseed, a reinterpretation of Shakespeare's The Tempest, and Catherine Duncan-Jones, a Shakespearean scholar from Oxford University. Today we will be discussing the motif of the corruptibility of power and how context presents the opportunity for composers to represent motifs within their work to influence society's beliefs and values and comment on the complexities of human nature. I would like to quickly touch on the context behind both of the, com both of the composers and the text for which these students can build their understanding of the motif upon. So Catherine, I was wondering if you could please provide some insight on Shakespeare's context and how this is depicted in The Tempest. Thank you, Gary. When Shakespeare was writing The Tempest, there was considerable influence from the establishment within Victorian-era Europe, such as the monarchy and the Catholic Church. This restricted many of the topics and ideas Shakespeare was trying to represent within his work. This is depicted in the personal context of Shakespeare by including subtle corporations of his negative perspective of colonialism which he believed was the abuse of power by Imperial Britain, which had corrupted their society. Interesting. He really was restricted by the societal beliefs of the time. Now over to you, Margaret. How did your context influence your adaptation of The Tempest into Hagseed? Unlike Shakespeare, I had far few societal restrictions placed upon my work, which allowed me to more freely express the motif within Hagseed. I took the character of Miranda from The Tempest and conveyed her as a more powerful and strong character in a contemporary society. This was done to influence how the reader views The Tempest as a sexist depiction of a female character. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? Now, due to the nature of both texts, there are some key differences and similarities between the texts, due to the dynamic influence of context on the textual conversations between them and the representation of corruptibility of power. My question for you, Margaret, is what elements did you decide to reimagine into Hagseed? My perspective of the motif of corruptibility of power is repre represented in a reduced focus upon magic as the source of power. The motif of magic is one I chose to exclude, exclude as I felt it would not resonate with contemporary audiences and detract from the ideas the book is trying to portray. I instead created a power dynamic through a change of setting by portraying Felix as a free man compared to the prisoners and how this pr power corrupted his true focus of helping the prisoners and instead allowing revenge to manifest within him. This change allows the text to more closely align with contemporary audiences and more effectively comment on the complexities of human nature. Where my text mirrors the Tempest is the representation of humans' innate desire for power and its influence upon one's actions to comment on the complexities of human nature, which still resonates with modern contemporary audiences. Now that is interesting, how you took elements from the Tempest and updated them with, within relation to the corruptibility of power to make it more relevant for contemporary audiences. Now I'd like to talk about the dominant nature of corruptibility of power in both texts and how this comments on humans' unquenchable desire for power and constantly sacri consequently sacrificing one's morality. Catherine, how do you think Shakespeare incorporates this concept into The Tempest, and why do you think he did so? I believe Shakespeare represents this motif through Prospero and his relationships with the other characters in the text. Prospero's homage of the constant thirst of power acted as a catalyst for his surpassing of his moral compass. Shakespeare demonstrates how Prospero's magic had corrupted him through its use to enslave Ariel. Prospero's corrupt nature is depicted in Ariel saying, Let me remember thee, what thou had promised, which has not yet performed me, in which Ariel pleads for her release. Shakespeare provides this perspective to counter the attitudes and values of the Victorian era to convey the complexities of human nature. I could not agree more, okay, uh, Catherine. When I chose to recontextualize the Tempest, I utilized the character of Felix and how he views himself in comparison to the prisoners to demonstrate the corruptibility of power. Felix sees himself as the star of the play, placing himself on a pedestal and forgetting his true purpose of educating the prisoners. The corruptibility of power is highlighted in suddenly revenge is so close, he can actually taste it. It tastes like steak. Rare. This depicts how Felix has used the prisoners as pawns to gain revenge by ignoring his moral compass to achieve this. This illustrates how it mirrored the concept of the use of power to enslave others to enact revenge. Felix's quest for power had corrupted his human nature, leading to him bypassing his morality along the way. Now isn't that interesting? These two titans of the literature world conversing. I would like to thank to our two guests for coming to talk to our students today about the corruptibility of power within both Hagseed and The Tempest.